Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, Kotzen. I'm Dennis, and today what I'm going to do is show you how to spin up a Google Cloud instance and install Cyber Panel with their one click install. If you haven't already signed up for a Google Cloud platform account, I have a previous video showing you how to do so. But what I need to do to first of all is go to cloud.google.com. And when you get into there, go down to go to console. Once we get into the dashboard of Google Cloud, and I just will let y'all know that this Google Cloud dashboard is customizable. So when you get around, start playing around with it. And uh, you see where it says customize. You could do whatever you need to according to what your project needs are about setting up the panel. But for this tutorial, what we're going to do, we're going to go up to these three lines and we're going to click it. And it'll open this particular section up. And as you can tell, Google Cloud has a lot going on. But for this particular one, what we're going to do is go to Marketplace and enter into it and then the next thing we need to do is search for cyber panel of course it'll bring us to this where you see the first thing we see is cyber panel official so let's click it <coughs> and It'll bring us to this page, and like I said, it will tell us everything that we need or going to be installing with Cyber Panel, and we're going to be installing Ubuntu 20.04, and that's what we want. We want Ubuntu, and the package, if you look at the package, it's everything that installs on all the others. So what we need to do now is go to Launch and click it. And it'll bring us in this particular section where we get to define how we want to set up our instance and stuff. And as you can tell, it's telling us what the base price is going to be on a monthly estimate. And this is all dependent upon kind of like Digital Ocean or Vulture or whatever, what you put in for your CPUs, your uh, disk size or whatever that, that needs in order. Of course, we're going to go through here and pick out different things. I'm going to just call this Cyber Panel 1. And I'm going to pick my zone, which is this particular section, to Central U.S. And, of course, you pick whatever you need to if uh, closest to you or your audience. And then the next step, what we're going to do is go down. And we're going to leave it on general purpose for this particular one. That's all we need. And you can see there's a couple things. The series is talking about the the CPU, the what series it is, and then the machine type about the how many CPUs, cores, and memory and stuff. So first of all, let's go to series and we're gonna click it. You can pick whichever you want. The, now the N1 is the cheapest course if because it's the first generation, but for this particular one, I'm gonna pick the E2. But they both will do fine, whichever one you want to click. And then on the machine type, uh, we open that up and you see it all it spins up or it goes up to a higher cores and more memory. And But the more you do, the higher the price. But for this particular one, all we need is the E2 small. We're going to go ahead and go on down to boot disk. And what we see now is the standard persistent disk. That's what we're going to leave it on. But I'm just going to just click this just to show you what else it offers. The balance, extreme, and the SSD persistent. So we're going to leave it on standard persistent disk. And we're going to change our boot size to match something like similar to DigitalOcean or to Vulture. But in this case, we're going to do DigitalOcean at around about 25 gigabytes of hard drive so as you can tell we're, we've got two cpu two gig which is actually a little bit better than what we get on a basic six dollar plan on which we would have one cpu on that particular one 
So let's look at the price and scroll up. As you can tell, it's showing to be about $13.43 right now. And it's giving us a little bit more better core or CPU cores. And, but it is a little bit more expensive. But the last thing what we just need to do, and of course we're going to leave everything else checked. And we're going to go down here to accept the condition and then click deploy. It says some errors. So let's see what I missed. So I missed something. So let's see what we got. Mm, that I missed. Oh, the appointment must, must be unique. This is, must have just do three. All right. We're going to go back down and we're going to click deploy. And now it's spinning up our instance. It's going to take a few seconds or a few minutes to do so. It's not too long. As you can tell, it's going to start listing all the things that it's installing at this particular time and where it's doing it. And of course, it's showing our URLs pending. There's our instance, the zone that we're going to, and the machine size. So it's telling us a lot more. And we're going to click about more about this software. And this is what I like about it. It's also going to show us everything that's being installed with it. Of course, that's the typical package that comes with the cyber panel. And as soon as they get completely installed, I'll be right back. I tell you, it literally wasn't but a few seconds after I logged off or paused when it got through. And of course, now as you go down, it will show you your next step or set suggested steps next steps and you know like we always have to do we got to log into ssh to get to initialize the instance it also recommending that we assign a static external ip address to this and what it does is install this particular kind of inferior if i'm saying that correct external ip address so basically that's kind of like a short-lived IP address so we were I'll show you how to do a static IP address and all right so let's go ahead and go to SSH and what this is this we need to click it and we're going to open it up in the browser window instead of going to the terminal or putty or something we're just going to use the one that's built in their particular system and you can see it's connecting, transferring the SSH keys. We got the terminal up and running. Of course, as you can tell up here, it tells us what our IP address is and the port, which is typical for Cyber Panel, is 8090. And it also is asking us, do we want to update the server as well? And yes, we just go ahead and click yes and update it. And it'll start updating. This shouldn't take but a few minutes. Yeah, I'll notice sometimes it seems like it gets stuck on this 33%. Stuff. So if it does that for a little while and you've been waiting, go ahead and just exit out of it and go back into another SSH browser window. Let it open up another browser window and it'll finish the, the update on it. And then we'll just click yes again. And this time it should finish everything up. Yeah, I have seen it seems like it gets stuck on 33% and stays there like forever before it goes. But let's try this one more time. See, it didn't take but just a few seconds. It says Cyber Panel update is complete and like it says on everything, enjoy your accelerated Cyber Panel server. All right, let's see. This shows the next step. What we need to do is get our uh, our passcode. Of course, that's no problem. We're gonna go back over to 
to the panel or to the terminal and we will get that particular passcode and if you look up here it tells you everything the ports and stuff like we talked about earlier and it also shows you the command in order to get the passcode and in this browser window i've noticed that you can't just click and paste and stuff as easy as you can in our terminals okay everyone what we're going to do we're just going to type this word in to the bottom uh, down here basically this is how we're going to end up getting our light speed uh, passcode so just type in sudo cat hit a space forward slash home forward slash ubuntu forward slash period light speed underscore password and this will give us our passcode as you could tell and we will take this passcode in order to log in to cyber panel so the next thing what we want to do we're going to go ahead and either you can remember your passcode or not but this right here is going to be taking us to cyber panel port but as we Remember that once we get the SSH to the instance, the grant cyber panel to grant access, it also suggests we visit the control panel. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to open up a new tab. I'm going to go back over to the terminal, and then I'm going to highlight this particular command C, which is copy. Go to the new tab and then click command v and click enter and of course it brings us to this page as we're so familiar with it says this page is not private or your connection we know this and uh, of course on google chrome or microsoft edge if you type in this is unsafe it will start spinning up and go into the login page of cyber panel or it should let's say let's hope it does it's spinning right now so we're gonna see how long it takes and take that long but it still took longer than i wanted to and then we're gonna go into admin go back over to your um, passcode and highlight it and click command C, go back over to your cyber panel pass thing or your login page and then command V. Click sign in and it'll bring you to the web page that you know so well or the back panel of your dashboard of your cyber panel. See, the usage, the disk usage, and everything is very similar, if not actually the last and what we do because we got more cores on this particular one but we're not finished everyone it says that we need to uh, make a static ip address from this one that's temporary so what we need to do is go back over to the deployment area and we're going to go down to assign a static ip external ip what we're going to do we're just going to click to learn more and then it's going to take us to exactly where we need to do in order to get it the easiest way i found out that i could get it if, uh, for some reason now go to go to external ip address and click it all right it brings us into this particular spot and of course it sees that we're let me go back over to cyber panel we're at the 35 184 98 i'm just going 35 184 98 so this is particular cyber panel instance we're doing right now as you could tell for some reason it didn't put a name right there but it did show that we're on this particular short-term lived um, uh, IP address but what we're gonna do we are just gonna click reserve and when we click reserve what it does it we still keep the external address but it reserve it for this 
particular instance and so it will stay as a static IP address and we're just going to name this cyber panel Let's say number two, and then we're going to click reserve. And then, as you can tell, it changes everything, and it is spinning it up, and it reserving this external IP address as a permanent static IP. So that is how you do that on CyberPanel. <laughs>